Uh, so we are so we are reading uh, Liquid Luck by J, uh, Joe Gallenberger. We are on chapter ten, page one zero three of the book, and page eighty eight of the PDF. Shivangla, you are muted. Chapter 10, Tales of Treasure. I just wanted to let you know about my positive experience with liquid luck. When I first received it, I had set up my stereo to replay repeatedly. I had it ready in the morning. When first awakening, I would put on headphones and stay in bed and let it play till I had to get going. So it would play one or two times and I did it 30 days in a row. The first week I found $5 three times. I'm in sales and I had my best month in a couple of years and led a national company in sales. So my income doubled. And the icing on the cake was that I'm a huge fan of Jeff Beck. He is a private person and hard to meet. I've been trying for years and I got to meet him and Brian Wilson. So it was a great 30 day run. Thanks, AG. So again, oh, just, an, just an example okay, uh, that. So again, it's just an example that when we are open to that abundance, when we put ourselves into that state of consciousness, that is when stuff starts to manifest for us. As you have seen, I have included a manifestation story in the person's own words at the beginning of each chapter. For this purpose, I used reports that were brief. I would like to now present more stories of people's success, including some longer ones. I think that all these stories taken together give a great feel for the process of manifestation using liquid luck and its principles to achieve quick success. Note that most of them include the writer reporting surprise and delight. When most people first attempt this process, they are often very unsure that it can work. So being pleasantly surprised is natural. So the words over here, the words over here are surprise and delight, right? So it's like an aha moment. When we start experiencing these aha moments in our life, that is when the magic starts happening. If you see a small child, everything is an aha for him. So everything is new. Everything is bright. And they are constantly learning all the time. This is something that we stop doing when we grow up. right? We think we know everything. We are not going into the aha. Wow, this is so great. Why, why can't I integrate it in this in, a, in my life? Why I can, I can grow using this? Wow, the taste is so good. We stop appreciating. We stop getting into that aha moment. And when we get into that aha moment is when things really start to happen. Perhaps even more interesting is when the people I work with stay in touch over many years, even a decade after seeing their first results. They still report surprise and delight at each occurrence of manifestation. I have found this to be true in my own experience as well. This work remains terrific, fun, even in the long term. It is like the experienced golfer still getting excited at the perfect shot. When you nail it, it feels great. So again, the point is that you know, we must not let boredom creep in. We, we have to experience that joy, that delight in everything that we are doing. And this is where gratitude starts coming in. The more you operate out of gratitude, the more aha moments you are going to experience. Because once you take something for granted, it loses that shine, it loses that energy, and then it stops working. This is true again, what we were discussing for the reball also, that if it starts getting mundane for you, then you lose it because the magic drops away, it fades away. So keeping that aha alive the trick in this according to me is gratitude being grateful all the time for anything that is happening to you i 
and much like in sports or the arts in manifestation work there always seems to be room for improvement if the activity ignites your passion continued work on these skills satisfies our desire to explore more of what our potential may really be in addition to becoming more skilled there is the reward of increased life enrichment from expanding our ability to love to be compassionate and to feel abundant because as we have seen this results in a more joyful life so continuing to work on these skills satisfies our desire to explore more of what our potential might really be in addition to become more skillful so the way that i look at this is that when we start paying attention as to when the manifestation took place how the manifestation took place what happened before the manifestation took place when we start tagging those feelings like in the workshops in the excursion workshop we constantly tell you that pay attention to the vibrations did you smell a smell did some movement happen what did you feel get a feel of that state of consciousness right the more you start engaging the process the more you start loving the process the more compassion and gratitude you have towards that process the deeper and deeper and deeper it will start becoming for you you will start being able to sense whether this will happen or it won't happen or what do you need to do to tweak it so that it happens right all that starts to fall into place so when you start paying attention as time goes on most of the people that i keep in touch with in this work flower into receiving as much or more joy out of helping others as they do from manifesting for themselves they begin to share their financial abundance more and more freely but also their time attention and energy in service of others when i have the good fortune to see them at workshops over the years each time is like a snapshot in which they often appear a bit younger with more smile in their eyes and they seem both more gentle and more powerful but mainly they become more sensitive and responsive to others needs as time goes on here are some more stories mostly from people at the beginning of their abundance journeys as they try out the liquid luck meditation i edited only for clarity i hope you enjoy them so what you give out will always flow back to you right the more you operate out of abundance and you're willing to share your abundance the more abundance will come the more selfless you become the more service oriented you become the more service you will also get the universe will also create that environment for you to actually serve others but the more selfish you are the more lack of abundance in your life so the idea is of expansion of giving of caring of doing to the best of your ability whatever you can do right under any kind of given circumstances and doing it with an open heart doing it freely without an ulterior motive no transaction involved is just for the sake of doing you are doing and that's when the magic starts to happen okay and it's a gentle process if if there is aggression involved in this if there is ego involved in this then it is not coming from the right side of the grid okay if you are wanting something back when you are doing it then again it's a transaction it becomes a little bit of a problem this in the normal material world is very difficult to actually come to a place where you are doing 100% service but yeah what is the consciousness with which you are doing it starts becoming very very important after using liquid luck i won a raffle at the accordion fest last weekend i won the prize i wanted a quilt made with previous festival t-shirts there were 2500 tickets and about 8 or 10 winners i am stoked thanks bd so now after so we are going to be just going through these stories 
I had numerous turns of luck in only 24 hours. It absolutely floored me. Here they are. Just pull over. I put it on my iPod and was listening to Liquid Luck on my way to class. I am a university professor. The brief sample was wonderful to listen to. Just those few seconds made me happy and relaxed. I continued the drive to work, which became annoying as I was behind a person going very slowly. It was driving me nuts. My biggest flaw is that I'm an impatient person. As I was alone in my car, I said to no one in particular, would you please just pull over? To my amazement, the car immediately pulled over and let me pass. I continued down the road and about 10 minutes later was again behind a slow driver. I laughed and said, hey, about, how about you pull over too? The car pulled over. At this point, I began to get a little, little unnerved. I said once, okay, but twice? That's a little weird. Next up was a tow truck carrying asphalt to repair potholes in the streets. They are horrendously slow. I said, wonder if there's any chance and the truck turned right. I continued on my way to school and got to one area where there is always a long traffic backup. As long as I've been driving this route, there has never been a time when there wasn't traffic. I almost fainted when I pulled onto that stretch of the road and there was not one car, not a single one. I zipped along and of course, when I got to school, a parking space opened up just as I pulled into the lot. It is not easy to find a parking space at just about any campus. I'm sure you know that. The next morning, I was driving home from taking my spouse to the airport. I found a beautiful metal trellis set out by the side of the road. It was seven feet tall and was quite ornate. Someone was throwing it out. It was in very good condition. To buy something like this would be around six to seven hundred dollars minimum. I had long waited a decorative piece like this for my house, as I am an avid gardener. I went home and got my station wagon and returned. It was still there. I put it in my wagon and took it home. I was happy about my find, but thought I would have to paint it. As soon as I put it in place, I could see the color was perfect for the garden spot I had chosen. The piece looked stunning. I'm so incredibly happy to have it. But something else happened on the trellises. I was working outside late this afternoon and my neighbor came over with his dog, who I love. He asked, can she hang around with you for a while? I said, sure and that I was planning to be working outside for a couple hours. He then said, beautiful trellises, they were yours by one minute. I looked at him quizzically. He said he had spotted them while he was out in his sports car, two-seater. He too raced home for an appropriate vehicle with which to transport them. When he drove back to the trellises, however, he saw me loading them up in my wagon. He asked if I saw him and I said that I had not. He said he waited while I loaded them up because he was so sure they would not fit in my vehicle and then he would get them. But of course, they fit perfectly in my vehicle. So I got them. The irony is that the reason I wanted them was to make a nicer view for him and his wife. I live in the carriage house of an old estate and he lives in the mansion. The property was divided in half 60 years ago and the carriage house expanded into a regular full-size house. He has a garage, but I don't. I have no utility area and I worry about the side of my house being unattractive to him. You can't really see it much from his place as I have it covered with wisteria, but I worry about it nonetheless. That is why I wanted the trellises to conceal my storage shed and utility area. So oddly enough, you could say this was a win-win situation as I'm using the trellises to make the view more attractive to him. 
quite a serendipitous development. Yes, sure. So it is really not recommended to hear these kind of tracks when you're driving. This is one thing. Until you get really, really used to it and it becomes your state of consciousness, it's better not to use these tracks while driving. This is a given thing. I, I don't know if, okay, he's written it here also. He's written now, it here. Now, the, the point becomes here that, you know, this willing suspension of disbelief. So when something starts working for us, our left brain starts to kick in and say, boss, this cannot happen, right? And that's when the magic stops. We have to just allow it to flow. And when it starts flowing, we have to go with the flow. Okay, so this is very, very important. We, we, you know, we stab ourselves. We are our biggest shackles. We put shackles on our own feet. We cut our own feet because we have, you know, the logical mind starts to come into the picture because it's something that it cannot comprehend. It cannot understand. When you're looking at a more holistic or a gestalt perspective, the left brain cannot understand it. Okay, so you have to transcend the left brain for luck to flow into your life, actually. Dear Joe, I regularly use liquid luck and I'm very glad about it. Imagine, I sleep much better and I had a funny experience. I put my hands around a spray of flowers, orchids, especially around one end of one stem of these orchids and the one flower of this stem mummified or fossilized. It is still in perfect state for more than six weeks now, while all the others flowers perished normally. So again, you can experiment with the reball. In fact, in one of the, uh, I think this was posted on the virtual groups also, this plant was dying of one of the participants and she put a reball around the plant and she put the reball around the water that she was using with the plant and the plant immediately started to flower again. I'll see if I can find that picture. I'll post it on the book group. So this thing can definitely happen. You know, when you have that intent, you know, when you're operating at that state of consciousness, that vibratory frequency, you can really affect things around you. Hey, Joe. Well, here is another liquid luck testimonial for you. I went through the liquid luck process twice so far for financial luck as far as intentions goes, but not towards any specific financial project. Five years ago, I took a very intense online training on currency trading that is more commonly known as Forex trading. The course was taught by its creator and he didn't take any prisoners. You had to pay attention, his favorite phrase to bark and do your homework assignments on time, or he had zero time for you. I'm afraid I was not living up to my best as a student because of the distraction from the severe pain from a work injury, depression, and fighting a fourth battle to stop the workers' comp company from discontinuing my payments because they deemed me fit to return to full duty. I wasn't. I always wanted to get back to retaking the class to redeem myself from my past experience and to use it to start earning more income as I'm still disabled from the injury some eight years prior. But each year, the price of the training would increase and I was always behind the financial eight ball. So retaking the class had not happened. I remained on their student mailing list but had not spoken them with them for five years. Rebuffing urges to email to say hi. But a week ago, when I got the urge to say hello, for some reason this time, I didn't resist and wrote them to say hello. I'm still alive and that Jim, the founder who had died from cancer just weeks after my class, ended and had left his business to two of his top students was on a cloud smiling down on how well they have grown the business and that I wanted to, at some point next year, retake the class to get back all I have forgotten over the years. 
that was that, or so I thought. Four days later, so, I remember. So I just want to say, okay, so over here, but a week ago, when I got the urge to say hello for some reason, I didn't resist and wrote to them. So our inner self, this intuitive ability is there in all of us. And these messages come to all of us. The point and problem and issue is we don't pay attention. When we start paying attention, these small messages with which come become extremely important. We have to pay attention. Like when we are going into F10 or F12, what are we doing? We are closing the chatter of the mind and we are allowing the inspiration to come in. So when that inspiration comes, you need to catch it. Okay. Otherwise, it will slip away and it doesn't stay for a long time. So you have to be aware. That's the basic game here. Four days later, I received an email welcoming me as a student to the new training starting in one day. These guys gave me free entry into the training that now sells for $2,499, 14 and a quarter times more than when I took it. This wonderful gift came at an inconvenient time as I am in another training. But this will teach me not to mess around with liquid luck if I do not want good stuff to happen for me at inconvenient time. Lol. This training is a challenging seven week time and brain commitment, but I am up for the challenge much more than I was five years ago. So this is again what we discussed, right? When we start going into these states of consciousness, we become very powerful and we have to know time, place and person we have to be aware. If you are not aware, then when the magic happens, we will not be able to use it. And then that becomes a mess. Now, I am more psyched than ever to continue priming my experiences with liquid luck and I wonder what's next. Most of my friends, family and even my lady would consider getting free access to the forex training a coincidence with playing Liquid luck. I, on the other hand, believe that the likelihood of this happening, me obeying the urge to contact the new owners, trainers, after five years and them not owing me a thing and surprising me with a free spot in the current training without the liquid luck process to spark the synchronicity of this happening to be very low. I will play close, pay close attention in the future to the number of these favorable events occurring by intention. I like doing the liquid luck process and will do it up to three times weekly, at least until I feel my unconscious firmly gets consistently creating the synchronicity of lucky experiences for me is a new top priority. I thought you would like to know you. Thanks. Kind regards, Robert. P.S. Oh, I beat the workers' comp in court. So, again, what is the point over here? The more we engage the process, the more we pay attention to the synchronicities, the more they will start happening to us. These urges that we have, you know, these small intuitions that we get, the more we act on them, the more powerful they will become. This is something we tell people in the workshops also when you're using the one bread technique, you get an answer, act on it. Okay. If you act on it, that means you are telling those guys up there that, yeah, I'm listening and I am acting. So you can give me more messages and I will act on them. And once they start understanding that, then one thing will continuously lead to the other. It simply starts to happen. You don't have to make it happen. Right. So what is synchronicity? It just happens and you get into the flow. Dear Joe, I have actually manifested the Jeep Wrangler I was looking to get. I think liquid luck had something to do with it. I was one of the early adopters to the CD. I typically take a day off listening to it in between. 
But on days when I do an overnight shift in preparing for the negativity at work, I do three days back to back with some manifesting with Emmy Singh and some liquid love. I read your book in December last year and got laid off shortly after. My belief systems have changed. Uh -huh. I thought my power to manifest the new car would be through my hard work, a big savings account and a lot of will and force. It had some individual determinism to it. When in fact the money came in from my father as a gift, so I owe some of this manifestation to a collection of things outside my own direct influence. By the way, I am no longer working the gruesome overnight shift. I have a better job now that pays much more. There are some things, maybe negative karma or negative energy, that I can't put my finger on for why I have bad things happen. But overall, I'm enjoying the experience in life. So, Thanks, Damien. So what do you say over here? Last December, I got laid off shortly after. But my belief systems have changed. So what happened? He changed his perspective. He changed the way that he was looking at things. And that's when the magic started to happen for him. Now, suppose I want something, right? It doesn't mean that it is going to come to me through the means that I think it will come to me from. It can come from anywhere. Manifestation can work in very magical ways. And you have to understand and give it a chance. The moment we start doing that in our lives, things really start to happen. Hi, Alina. I had listened to Joe's interview with Coast to Coast AM regarding the release of his Liquid Lux CD and his explanations regarding the concepts. I am pretty extremely open-minded and often meditate occasionally, utilizing CDs from the Monroe Institute or other binaural beats or Alpha and Delta range tracks. So I thought I'd order myself a copy of Joe's CD. Once the CD arrived, I was quick to put it to use, but in a more passive sense, in that I simply transferred it to my iPod and passively listened to it for a few nights prior to going to sleep. I didn't really feel like I was getting the full benefit of the CD and knew I wasn't really following Joe's instructions, and so I decided one night to actively participate whilst listening to the CD. So, what does he mean over here? It means that he was not engaging the meditation, right? It was working in the background. Yes, it will have an effect even if the meta music is playing in the background or any of the tracks are playing in the background. But when you engage it, right, with your mind and your feeling, that's when you really integrate it. So that becomes important. Of course, if you're clicking out, you're still engaged because the subconscious mind is still listening to the track. I sat myself down in a modified lotus position, which I often use for meditative sessions and began focusing on the exact words and instructions Joe's was, Joe was providing. I decided the key to being successful was intense focus and visualization of the imagery Joe created through his words and the intent behind them. After relaxing my body using various breathing techniques, I imagine the various ingredients being poured or whisked into the potion. As it was being constructed, I visualized the liquid, the feel of it, the colors, the flask itself, and importantly, the pouring of my affirmations into the potion. I really felt it was important to reflect upon what Joe was saying and actually realize and believe that I was indeed lucky and had in fact lived a very lucky and blessed life which I certainly have, especially in comparison to so many other people. I poured these realizations into the potions and believed every word and thought I had so, when so, I did so. So now what, what is he saying? So what is he, what is he meaning to say over here, right? That put all the sensory perceptions into the exercise. Like now when we tell people that journal, when you journal after an exercise, 
you are actually putting all your sensory perceptions in that exercise into your journaling so when you refer it to later that exercise the feeling that you had the uh, the, the the shift that you had when you were doing the exercise will all come back to you so when you are doing something like this the visualization you actually have to feel it you know you sense it you taste it you smell it and then you put it into the bottle and that makes it even more potent during the entire experience i kept my thoughts focused purely on joe's words and his directions and finally i produced a translucent potion which i held in my mind's eye in a small crystal bottle i drank some of it then and there and imagined it pouring down my throat and spreading throughout my body finally i mentally put away the potion for future use to me the creation of the potion is actually a form of psychic alchemy now at around the same time the new ipad air was released in australia i tried to purchase it but with no luck as every store i went to in perth was sold out i went to purchase it online via the apple store but after all the extras and insurances i was looking at spending over 2000 when i had virtually given up hope of purchasing one in the immediate future and for a reasonable price i was alerted to a raffle a firm had just initiated where the price was exactly what i was after a 32 gb ipad air our marketing manager asked if i'd like a ticket and i said i would take 3 for 20 dollars just before i handed over my 20 dollars i retrieved my liquid luck potion and took a deep swig of it whilst reciting in my mind a winning mantra and an affirmation of my own luck and inherent luck and good fortune in life i took my tickets and exchanged my money and as i did so i just knew i would win it wasn't wishful thinking this was different in that somehow i just knew so so you say he says a very important thing over here right he says this was different in that somehow i just knew right when you start getting deep into this principle then that sense of knowing starts to come that this is going to manifest but then you know there's a very subtle point between the the conscious mind thinking and what comes from below the line right you have to be able to discern you have to feel the tasir of what is coming from here and what is coming from here the more you get into it the more that feel comes you know it's a it's it's something that you got to learn for yourself no one can teach it for you and that is where paying attention comes in that what happens to you what is the language that you are using when you are doing that for example when i'm doing biofield tuning my body has started giving me language now i feel a burden on my if i feel a pressure on my uh, back on my shoulders it's like a burden and different areas of my body have started playing a language with me and let me tell you it, it manifests so beautifully in the biofield tuning sessions that it's really fantastic now because the body is giving the message and again we come back to what we were talking before we started somatic intelligence the more we can listen to our body our bodies are really beautiful instruments we've been saying this for the last 30 years since we started doing the vastu workshops we've constantly been telling people that we don't listen to our body whenever whenever there is a stress anywhere okay the body will tell you when something is going to happen the body will tell you but you have to pay attention to the body right and what he is saying over here is very important that sense of knowing that body is the key to be able to get that sense of knowing but we need to pay attention the draw wasn't for a couple of more weeks and various people bought their tickets and there was plenty of office banter regarding the price i didn't engage in it and wasn't anxious about the outcome as i just knew the outcome would be in my favor 
I wasn't arrogant in my thoughts, but peaceful and content in the knowledge I had. The night of the draw was a charity quiz night and I wasn't able to attend. I had actually forgotten about it until later on that night when I thought to myself, I bet I get a call tonight telling me I won. Later that night, I was taking a shower and sure enough, my mobile started to ring and I knew instantly it was one of my friends from work telling me I had won the iPad. In fact, my mobile rang several times and chimed with a few messages as multiple people left various messages telling me I won the iPad in. I didn't rush to answer any of them at the time. I just knew and was thankful for, to the universe for my good fortune. So, so see the attitude, right? The attitude is of gratitude. He says very clearly, I just knew and I was thankful to the universe for my good fortune. He is not taking the credit himself, right? He's saying that the universe manifested it for him and he's in an even clean. He's not overly excited that he has won the uh what won the ipad because he came from that deep sense of knowing and when you start operating in that field this is exactly what happens you know that this is going to happen so you're really not upset by something going wrong and you're not overly excited by go something going right right but there is still a very powerful sense of gratitude and appreciation that yes i got the information from before so I could prepare myself if something is going wrong. And I got the information from before so I could prepare myself even to receive the abundance. I truly believe that properly performing and visualizing the instructions that Joe provided on the Liquid Lux CD provided me with the knowledge to create a potent portion that literally increased my luck from a chance into a certainty. I felt absolutely certain I would win. There was no doubt and that in itself is odd as usually everyone is affected by negative speak at some point, but this time my belief was unwavering. It felt more like actual knowledge of success rather than a belief or a hope. So thank you, Joe. I use my iPad Air every day and truly feel luckier as a result. Kind regards, Drew. So, so over here he says that there was no doubt that in itself an odd is odd as usually everyone is affected by negative speak, right? So what do you mean by negative speak? Our self-thinking. We actually create barriers for ourselves because we don't allow the flow to happen. We don't operate with that sense of knowing, that connection. When we start doing that, things will automatically start to happen. We don't need to make them happen. They'll happen. Hi, Joe. This happened on the weekend before I left for my Inner Vegas adventure. I sell my paintings for a living on Jackson Square in New Orleans. I had a slew of bills to pay before I left and was counting on the weekend before leaving to make $2,000. I made half of it on Saturday and was counting on Sunday for the rest. I did the liquid luck meditation before I went to bed on Saturday night. I woke up Sunday morning to all day rain. Talk about a disappointment. A couple of hours later, I received a phone call from a woman who wanted a painting. I needed another thousand before I left. The painting was $1,200. She told me that her husband said that they could buy it if it was under a thousand. So I let her have it for $999. Thanks, Joe. Right. Wow. Now, this is very important to me. Okay. Many times we think that, okay, this is what we need to get. But the universe is giving us a different deal. So, you know, you have to have that intelligence, that mindset, not to lose out unnecessarily and take the deal. I have seen this happen 
in so many cases it is really not funny most of the time many times i won't say most of the time many times in our life we refuse abundance coming into our life just because our expectation is a little more than what is coming not realizing that by not accepting it we are actually rejecting what the universe is giving to us so this is a very important uh, thing that has been brought up in this paragraph i'm working on a liquid luck testimonial i've got some incredible comments for you regarding the new ideas that have come to me while listening to liquid luck my business that had been fairly stagnant took off with hundreds of new orders i solved a difficult circuit design problem and have come up with a fantastic new design for a new replacement product this was also inspired during listening to liquid luck cheer so when we are in that open state of consciousness right and we are open to inspiration that is when the new ideas also start to crop in let me tell you it's like uh, like this theoretical physicists right how do they work they are open to inspiration and they do the experiment inside their head many times the experiment is not possible to do in the physical world and then it they create the theory so einstein was a theoretical physicist a lot of his theories were not proven until many decades after he died also right so the fact becomes that when we become open then we can actually start perceiving things before they manifest in the physical world so this was something that we were talking about and uh, william bullman talks about in his obe program also he says very clearly that you can perceive the aura and then you can actually change the aura so you can go into a state of consciousness which is the precursor to something which is manifesting and tune it over there so that what you want automatically starts to manifest this is something that actually all of us can do it's not restricted to uh, one or two people and the liquid luck exercise actually allows us to access that state of consciousness thank you thank you thank you thank you for what you both do what you've created in this program and thank you for making your products so accessible i'm sure i will be spreading this program as love to my friends and family and i hope they benefit as i have through my mom money has little to do with why i love this meditation feeling so bright light and blessed every day is incredible and i feel contagious blessings to you and yours pp so again this is this is again very important we think that you know when you're living in materialistic world we equate happiness with money but actually that is not the fact the bigger blessing according to me is that you have enough so when you want something when you need something it should manifest in your life right and being bright and cheerful is actually much more important than having bag loads of money in your house or in your bank account so he says very clearly it's not it's very little to do with money but i love feeling so bright and light which is really amazing amazing since using liquid luck i have won eight days in a row at roulette i just visualize taking a drink of liquid luck while i am at the roulette table and the win happens very quickly i have some interesting things to report about using your liquid luck i could not help but fall very deeply asleep when listening to liquid luck for the first couple times i was so grateful for this because i often have sleep stressors like trouble sleeping vivid nightmares and thoughts of problems i have trouble solving 
I wake up hitting myself in the head because I am sure I have forgotten something important. Over and over. In contrast with liquid luck, I slept deeply. So while I was in Vegas last week, I was listening while running on the strip early morning, what, which I love to do. It's sort of trance-like for me. I loved it and actually got to hear the meditation. One night, I was down about a hundred from blackjack and we went to play craft. Bought in for a hundred dollars and went on a monster roll. I guess at least 20 minutes and had a long row of chips ahead of me. That was so fun. We did have a wonderful time. I was a little disappointed about not doing better at the tables with liquid luck, except for that awesome crafts roll. But I feel like it manifested in other ways, like really connecting with my parents and my brother and just getting to spend stress-free time with them. Happy, relaxed moments with my dad are highly valuable to me. Thanks for the great meditation. When I got home, it turns out that my nine-year-old puppy had been hit by a car while I was gone. He had not one injury and is totally fine. All the best, Melanie. So again, uh -huh. relationships are also very, very important. Okay, I guess we'll have to stop here. Anyone, anything, any comments?